Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm going over the most accurate way to calculate your basal metabolic rate so that you can either lose or gain weight effectively when counting calories. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance in the side of the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. It doesn't get much better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, the topic of the day, how to most accurately calculate your basal metabolic rate. But before we get into that, what I wanna make sure we understand is that calorie counting, first of all, is simply a tool that should be used for a short duration goal. It is not a long-term strategy, and if your mindset is in the idea of I'm going to be calorie counting for the rest of my life, this is not a sustainable thing. We need to change that mindset right away and take a different approach. But if you are using calorie counting as a tool to have a period of weight loss or a period of weight gain, then this is one of the best ways that you can actually calculate your metabolic number at this certain period in time so that you can work off of to either go into a caloric deficit or into uh, excess calories and put on that weight. So with that said, um, let's go ahead and talk about how to actually, first of all, calculate your basal metabolic rate the most accurate way. So we're going to be tracking over a period of one week the amount of calories that you take in per day without attempting to make any changes in your body weight at all. Okay, so we want to just eat regularly over a period of one week like we normally would. Okay, so we shouldn't have started any weight loss attempts or weight gain attempts here. It is simply holding neutral for one week and measuring the calories that are taken in here. Okay, now we want to try to do this as accurately as possible. So measuring things out when we are taking them in and really looking at the amounts that we are taking in and tracking those things as we are taking them in so that we don't forget to put stuff in. And then over that seven day period, that week's time, we're going to average out the number of calories that we ate per day that maintained our body weight, okay? Now, it is, under, uh, um, it is important to understand that our basal metabolic rate is something that fluctuates on a daily basis. This could be based off of sleep, it could be based off of other factors that are going on in what we're eating um, and the activity levels, all of that is going to vary on a daily basis. But the key here is that you've maintained your weight and ate this average amount of calories. And if we have that, we know we're within, um, within that range or close to that range that we would wanna take in um, and work from there. Once we have that baseline number, the average of the cal caloric intake over seven days that you've done for yourself, then we can adjust our calories accordingly based off of our goal. So if our goal is weight loss, I suggest dropping your calories by about 250 to 500 calories, somewhere in that range, to begin losing weight. Our ultimate goal is about one to two pounds of weight loss per week. So that's what we should be looking for. One to two pounds of weight loss per week with that 250 to 500 calorie deficit. And I'm guessing this is where most people are going to be working is trying to create that deficit with their basal metabolic rate. So that is something that we really look for, for specifically. If you're newer to the journey overall, you're likely to lose more weight in the beginning naturally. So if you're just improving the things that you're eating, taking in fewer calories overall, that is naturally going to cause you to drop more weight in the beginning of your journey. But over the average, we should see about one to two pounds of weight loss with that calculation. Now, what you can do is always start small with that 250 calorie line and then bump it up based off of the speed of your weight loss and 
based off of hunger signals and how much you're actually challenged with the caloric intake that you are eating. Um, as your body adapts, it's important to understand that these things are also adapting with your body composition overall. So as you lose weight, as you eat fewer calories, your body adapts to that lower caloric intake. And it's important to understand that you might need to recalculate your basal metabolic rate again, and then adjust again from there if you are still looking to um, go further in toward your goal or change things that are still, um, still not quite where you would want them to be overall. So know that this is a moving number, a moving target at all times, and it is something that is very varied because there are lots of variables involved in it. This is why, personally, I do not fully rely on calorie counting all the time, although again, we do use it as a tool with clients, um, but it can be handy, and this is the most accurate way to do that. If you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who's trying to lose weight and who wants to know where their basal metabolic is kind of sit metabolic rate is sitting right now overall. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop those down below in the comments here. If you have not already, be sure to take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. Catch you next week.